For the Activity 8 tasks, you are going to be turning in your answer sheet, completed spreadsheet, as well as the completed SPSS output for the tasks only. Please take note of the file formats. I've been getting some variable file formats and submissions, which makes it more difficult to grade sometimes. So make sure that your answer sheet is a document or like a Word document or a PDF and that your spreadsheet and your outputs are in Excel file formats. Um, we are going to assume that we have a 95% level of confidence in two-tailed tests unless otherwise noted. For task one, this will be very similar to practice one. So I've given you a research scenario and then in your data spreadsheet, you've got the data that were collected for that research scenario, and then an ANOVA table uh, that looks pretty similar to what you used in practice one. So if you get stuck with any of those calculations, I recommend either re-watching the practice one video, or you can also go to uh, the module eight PowerPoint, um, specifically the part one PowerPoint, and uh, reference any of the equations that are uh, applicable to the table. For task number two, I've given you, again, a research scenario description. For this particular task or this uh, scenario, we want to see if there are any noticeable differences in body fat measurements depending on the time of day the measurement was taken. So just so you have an idea of what the data looked like, we tested three different methods. So hydrostatic weighing, skin fold estimates, and bioelectrical impedance. And then we wanted to see if the body fat measurements we got from each of these methods were different every four hours from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. So as a result, you end up with 12 measurements total for each subject. Um, so you'll choose which ANOVA is appropriate for that data set and then answer the questions on the answer sheet. You will be creating a bar graph that represents the differences between, between the means of the groups being compared. So you can either do this, um, or I, I kind of will let you pick the groupings that you want, um, but it's pretty similar to how we've done our uh, comparable bar graphs in the past. Just make sure that you include error bars on all of your groups. That seems to be the one thing that people usually forget. For task number three, similar to task number two, you've been given a research scenario. In this particular case, we have fitness students who want to know if there are significant differences in caloric expenditure when participating in different methods of cardiorespiratory exercise. So three separate days, we have 29 individuals come in to do a different mode of exercise. And the modes of exercise were rowing, running, uh, or rowing, running on a treadmill, and then running on an elliptical. So you have an idea of what the data look like. Um, these values in the spreadsheet represent the caloric expenditure in kilocalories, and then each of these columns represent a different method that was tested. So again, rowing, running on the treadmill, and then running on the elliptical. So similar to task two, you'll pick which repeated measures ANOVA is appropriate to run on this uh, or on these data, and then you'll interpret your results, answer the questions in this in the answer sheet, and then again create a bar graph that represents the differences between the means of the groups being compared. Again, the groupings can be in the format of your choice, so long as everything is labeled correctly. If you need a reference for your uh, data visualization and what you get uh, evaluated on or what points are being um, kind of allocated to, you can use this as a checklist just to make sure you aren't missing anything in your bar graph. So if you guys have any questions on this activity, please feel free to shoot me an email.